Uh, hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, Vimal DS Mysuru Meetup. And uh, about Vimal DS, uh, we are a not for profit organization who are involved in promoting women and gender minorities uh, in the space of machine learning and data science. Uh, we give them opportunities. So we host a lot of workshops. We conduct hackathons and we provide them uh, networking opportunities to upskill themselves. sharing these slides in the comment section. So you'll be able to uh, find the meetup link there. And uh, you'll also, you can also follow me on Twitter uh, because I am I organize around uh, seven communities. I manage seven communities, so there are a lot of events we organize. So if you want to uh, keep uh, yourself notified about the events, then you can follow me on Twitter. And um, we are building up uh, the core team right now at Vimal DS Mysuru. So one of our core team member, Nikhil, is there. He's in charge for uh, handling the uh, entire volunteering team. Uh, so I'll have uh, put his email ID out there. So if you're interested to be part of a uh, core team of Vimal DS Mysuru, or you're interested to contribute in any way, uh, then you can reach out to Nikhil. And uh, today we have uh, two. Uh, we have a very interesting topic, uh, and uh, it's been taken by top experts, researchers, and scientists, and uh, by Dr. Kalai Ramia and Dr. Uh, Sahoho Yui. Uh, so I'll just hand over the screen to them, and hope you'll enjoy the session. Thank you. Uh, Kalei, uh, yeah. Uh, Kalei, can you unmute yourself? Hi, uh, I think Sahoko is sharing the screen first. Yeah. Um, yes. Ami, uh, can you see my screen? Uh, I'm, uh, okay. Is it not showing up? Let me try this again. How's that? Yeah, I'm able to see your screen. Yes. Great. So, um, let's see here. Great. So, thank you so much uh, to Usha and the group for this opportunity to talk about this project. Um, first, we want to do a, a quick introduction. So my name's Sahoko. I'm a design researcher. I'm also a social scientist by training. Um, I received my PhD in geography from UC Davis, and my research includes investigating attitudes and behaviors through the lens of social practice theory. And that looks at the dynamic interplay of behaviors and social systems that uh, behaviors are situated in. So I teach at Davis and Berkeley, and today I'm gonna talk about the user-centered approach to developing a content-driven chatbot. And I'll hand it off to Kalai to do her introduction. Thank you, Sahoko, and thank you, Usha, for giving uh, us this opportunity to talk about this. Uh, so my name is Kalei Ramia. Uh, I am a data slash research scientist at uh, Palo Alto Research Center. Uh, so it's a Xerox's R&D arm. Um, so we do a lot of uh, applied research as well as fundamental research projects. Um, so my day job involves uh, researching and developing statistical and machine learning solutions uh, for applications related to climate and energy mostly. Uh, and I'm also generally interested in exploring AI applications for social good. Um, so I do those on the side as well. Uh, and uh, likewise, like Sahoko, uh, I have a PhD from UC Davis uh, on applied mathematics. Uh, and uh, we went to school together, and that's how we know each other. Um, so we were able to work on several projects together since then. Uh, I'll hand it off to Sahoko to introduce the project, and then I'll take over for the introduction to Chatbot. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Kalai. Um, so I'm really excited to be here today to talk about um, the user-centered approach to developing a content-driven chatbot. And this is our project called Bebo. That stands for the Benefits Bot. 
Uh, so a little bit about the project. Um, this was a project that was completed as part of a global all women virtual hackathon, and it was hosted by um, expat women from April 30th to May 7th. The team consisted of Kalai, who was our project lead, and um, we're going to be talking a little bit more about how the chatbot is built. Um, myself and six other women that included data scientists, hardware and software engineers, and marketing business experts. So the theme of the project was um, to help find solutions to challenges faced by women now and post COVID-19. And so this presented itself with a lot of different kinds of topics and we had this discussion. So what should the problem that we're solving? What's the question that we want to answer? Um, so we decided to make a chatbot. So to start off to talk a little bit about chatbots, um, chatbots, you're probably all aware, it's a software application used to conduct online chat conversations in lieu of a direct contact uh, conversation with um, a live person. Um, the main difference is that um, there's two different main ways. One is an FAQ type chatbot that answers uh, questions. So you would see essentially a website that has an FAQ that has question, answer, question, answer. That's really different than a user-centered chatbot that's really personalized and trying to get out what kind of answers that you're looking for and trying to help you answer, ask the right questions. So what we decided to do was create a user-centered chatbot. And we decided to do this to try to answer the question, how can we make it easier for unemployed people to get help? Um, so in today's talk, I want to talk about our question, uh, why it's important to ask the right questions and how we arrive there, um, how we gather the data, and the importance of identifying the users and creating personas, what the data was and what we ended up um, what we ended up with to use the chatbot and the, ended up, the resulting product that we made. And um, lastly, we'll talk about oh, what we could do in the future. So first our question identifies the key target users, which are um, unemployed people. Um, oops, sorry about this. Um, unemployed people. Uh, um, and we asked the question, how can we make it easier for unemployed people to get help? Whoops. So, so a little bit about um, the US unemployment benefit system. So, which is run by the Department of Labor. Um, it has oversight responsibility for unemployment insurance program. And what this program does is it provides unemployment benefits to workers who became unemployed through no fault of their own. Um, and they have to meet certain kinds of eligibility requirements. So some of the key things are is that it varies by state. Um, it usually requires a uh, waiting period. You usually have to be looking for work and it has to be employed, um, approved by the employer. Um, so why is it important for people to get, for unemployed people to get help and what are the pain points were the key question that we wanted to ask. So the next question was why? Um, the, the thing that we wanted to focus on was we wanted to really have a really broad and deep impact. So for us, this meant, is it affecting a large number of people? Like how many people are affected? And then how much is it affecting their livelihood? So we took a look at the data. And one of the key problems um, with this unemployment agency was that it just wasn't a prepared to handle a super large number of applicants, all needing service at once. So an article from the New York Times showed that um, showed how bad the job losses were. And it was over 20 million people that lost a job as a result of the pandemic. Um, the unemployment rate was at 15%. And I think in just a six week time period, they had over 3 million people file for unemployment, um, which was more than um, the total number of people that applied for unemployment in 2019. And I think the unemployment number right now is about 40 million people in the US. And uh, another study that came out um, in May found that 12 million people simply didn't apply because it was too difficult. So this is where we found this, this pain point. Um, and so it was, and what happens is, is the inability to secure benefits can have really dire financial consequences that impact entire families. Um, so how much people are impacted. So we asked this question and if you did a quick Google search, we found loads of stories of people uh, sharing like how frustrated they were with the system. And the most common pain point was, was that they couldn't get their questions answered in order to get benefits. 
it took people hours and hours. And in the meantime, bills were piling up. People still needed to eat and put food on the table. Kids were stuck indoors because they couldn't go to school. Um, and other elderly and other vulnerable people couldn't get assistance. And here, just again, just a handful of the quotes um, that people had. And um, women in particular had it much harder. So uh, women suffered the greatest losses and have been hit the hardest. And they were the most vulnerable to job losses because they tended to fill most of the marginal and low authority positions. So they lost their jobs at disproportionately high rates. So on top of that, women are more likely to be the caregivers and the care caretakers as well. So they're responsible not just for, for the financial needs, but also the emotional needs of their families. Um, so once we, you know, we asked the question, we knew why, um, now we figured out how do we actually gather this data to create these personas? Um, what we started out with was we started to get secondary data, and this is usually a good starting point. So secondary data is um, using, secondary research is using existing data, such as internet, books, or articles, uh, to support your design choices in the context behind the design. Um, it's usually conducted by gathering information someone else created with the goal of becoming more informed on a specific topic. The great thing about this is that secondary research um, can educate you and inspire possibilities. It can also really help yield a, a better understanding of related products and people's attitudes and behaviors about a topic. Usually this is a really great first step in terms of gathering data and it, it can include things like reading testimonials or uh, reading press clippings or publications or previous studies. Um, so what we did was we gathered information from government websites. So this is a clip from the California Employment Development Department. Um, we also gathered data from social media. So the reason why we did that is because it was a place where people were able to post questions, comments, frustrations, and it was meant to be seen by a lot of people, people outside of their, their network. So this was really valuable and that people were sharing a lot of stories um, that were viewable by the larger public in order to get answers because they just simply weren't able to get answers through the more traditional means. And a lot of people ended up sharing information that was helpful to each other and became a, a support system as well. So people were sharing tips and tricks um, and it really helped us understand what the pain points were, what was really difficult. Um, so we gathered all this and next was we wanted to create personas for people. Uh, personas are important because it's a model of a person and it helps build empathy and insights based on our research. So we had all of these great quotes that we gathered. We had a lot of really, uh, really rich data, um, listening and reading about people's stories. And so what's great about this persona is you give a little bit of demographic information, a background, and these aren't real people, but we gave a name to each of these different kinds of people. We thought about where this person would live, what their environment and their situation is, uh, how old they are, and what specifically they would be looking for in trying to get help. And why wouldn't they be able to get unemployment benefits or what's the difficulty that they're having? So, uh, this was really helpful in us trying to determine um, how would we make it easier for individuals like this in each of these different categories to get help. And um, this lends us to what kind of users that we're actually designing for. So we wanted to make sure to think about not just the lead users and lead, uh, lead users and mainstream users, meaning the lead users as the very early adopters or innovators, the people who would be almost looking for a chatbot to be able to answer questions, or even the mainstream users who would kind of jump on the bandwagon once it's become a little bit more ubiquitous. But we are really looking at the extreme users. So who are the types of people who might be uh, the most vulnerable and might have the most difficulty in getting uh, in getting the help and looking for for help. Um, and so uh, we were really focused on again not just looking at the lead users but looking at who the extreme users are. And the kind of data that we ended up producing, which I'll show you in just a minute, was 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 this where you could see how we created this dialogue flow where we gathered all these different kinds of data and we posed a bunch of different kinds of questions. 
And so we had a team of five people reading through various secondary sources and then compile all this information on this virtual whiteboard that we were all collectively working on all at once. And we thought about all the different kinds of uh, situations and questions that people might have and tr try to ask questions that we think people might have, like if we were in this position, and then try to navigate them towards the best possible answer that would be the most helpful. So we thought about eight different profiles of women and um, we came up with over 50 different questions. And that's just, I think, a more conservative estimate that we have. And so we asked the question, we answered why, how, the personas, we figured out the kind of data, and now I want to talk about the resulting product that we created, which was um, a product called Bebo, and it took us over four days. We made profiles of over eight women, we answered 50 questions, and the, the users that we thought of were uh, refugees, visa holders, undocumented, peop undocumented peoples, uh, caregivers of children, of elderly, people with claim issues, um, the elderly with health issues, and people waiting for their um, employment development card. So uh, these were, we found some of the most pressing issues and um, we asked what were the most common questions and concerns of these eight different groups of people. Um, again, we gather data, not just from government websites, but also from social media where people share their stories. And so this allowed us to understand their pain points and get help, helps and tips. And the key thing was that we really wanted to reduce the jargon. And so, um, the key of Bebo was that it reduced the time and the stress for unemployed people seeking financial help. And so here are some of the things that come with it. It's a conversational AI bot. It's free. It's this one-stop shop for unemployment benefits and questions. It has up-to-date information from government sources and knowledge and tips from individual sources. Um, it's super easy to use and access. You can look at it from this website here. And it offloads some of the traffic from um, constrained state resources. And again, so we thought about who is it for? It's for everyone. But we really catered this to think about who the most extreme users might be, which are the most vulnerable, which are women, caregivers, immigrants, and the elderly. And she even speaks two languages, which are English and Spanish. And we also thought about, um, you know, what other kinds of products are out there. For us, um, it was really important that we had this user-centered chatbot. Um, the, uh, the employment development chatbot, uh, there is one available, but that is an FAQ type chatbot. And again, ours was an, uh, a user-centered one, which gathered information beyond the government uh, data that's available. And it was really easy to use and free, unlike some of the other competitors, which you had to pay for. And it was really kind of embedded in uh, a platform that had a bunch of other kinds of uh, data and services. So we thought about um, the future, the next steps, what will we do? We really want to capture primary data, which is actually talking directly to people, having them test out the platform and the system to figure out what's working and how it could be improved. Try to use it on different platforms, because right now we're, it's available on the website, but we think it'd be really helpful if it was, if it was on a mobile system. Um, and while she speaks uh, English and Spanish, we would really like to make it accessible um, using a lot of different languages. And because EDD re eligibility requirements uh, differ by state, um, we want to make sure to see if we can um, widen the scope so that it looks at all these different states. Um, so thank you. So that's the introduction to a user-centered approach to creating a content-driven chatbot. And I will hand it off to Kalai, who's going to be talking about an introduction to building your first chatbot. And um, I think we have time for maybe about one or two, uh, one or two questions. And I will Thank you, Sahoko. I don't see any questions as of now, uh, but we'll, I'll keep an eye on it. Uh, and uh, in the meanwhile, we can get started on the uh, uh, introduction to chatbot. Great. Set. All right. Uh, yeah, can uh, you stream my screen? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Uh, 
yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching this. Uh, so, and thank you Sahoko for giving like a very detailed introduction to um, the backend work that goes behind a chatbot. Um, so we thought this two part series would help uh, someone understand um, how to build a user centric chatbot, like the work that goes behind it. And once you collect all that data uh, and how we can you know, go build your first chatbot, um, so I just want to uh, give a brief uh, you know, note that this is a very simple overview on what you can do with the first chatbot and not meant to be a deep dive. Um, the goal is to introduce you the basics of chatbot and how can you build one if you have no knowledge about it. And there is definitely like a lot more work. You, know, you can learn from this and then uh, you know, deep dive on your own. Um, so that is what uh, I feel the goal of the presentation is going to be. Um, so to give a brief overview, there are many, many chatbot platforms, as you all may know already. Um, there are some from these you know, big companies called Google's Dialogflow, Amazon has this Alex, uh, Lex, uh, Amazon Lex, and then IBM Watson as your bot. Um, these are easy to build, uh, but if you want to scale it, it requires their respective cloud accounts for extension. So you may have to subscribe to that. Um, and then there are open source uh, platforms like Rasa and BotPress, um, and they are amazing. Uh, you can custom design it, but it, it it is coding heavy. So you need to know a little bit of what uh, language you're going to work on, uh, whether it's in Python or, uh, and it, it's going to be a building it from scratch, not uh, like Dialogflow or IBM Watson. And then there are third party platforms which have a subscription model. Um, these are the easiest. I would say like uh, they have a, a GUI type of development. Um, like if you have no background on coding or chatbot basics, um, th those are the things that you can do. But then you have to pay uh, per month uh, in these subscription models to do it. Uh, the good news is uh, the logic and conceptual design remains the same for all the platforms. So if you know the basics of chatbot uh, building in one platform, you can definitely leverage it for others. Um, so I'm going to talk about Google's Dialogflow, uh, which is uh, where we built our B uh, product Bebo with. Um, so I can uh, show you the basics, and uh, definitely, you know, you can um, learn from it. A deep dive into dialog flow customizations and other things from there. So to get started, um, so the first thing is, you know, going to uh, dialog flow website and logging in with your Google account. So let me show you how we can do that. Um, so this is the Dialogflow uh, website. So if you have a Google account, you can log into it, which I've already done. And then there is this go to console. Uh, you can click on it to go to. So once you log in there, uh, you can actually see this dashboard. Um, so in the uh, left side, you can see something called create agent. Uh, so this is where you can create your own chatbot agent. So let's go and click on that. Uh, I'm going to give a name called Tutorial Agent for now. And here is where you can choose the language. As you can see in the drop dropdown, um, there are many languages. Unfortunately, for Indian languages, I think there's only Hindi uh, and nothing else. Uh, but for now, I'm going to choose English. And I'm going to come back and show, like, if you want to build a multilingual chatbot, what do you need to do? Um, so I'm going to choose uh, the time zone here uh, and create. All right, it's done. So, all right. So once you create your ch first chatbot agent, so you're going to see these two default intents. Now, intents are the building blocks of chatbot. So they are the training uh, phrase and response where you give to build it. So I'm going to click on one and then show you what it is. So this is assuming like, you know, when a user, uh, you know, opens the chatbot, they're just going to say something like, hi, hello, and all those things. And then there are some default responses on uh, what it can do. So like, you know, uh, how are you doing? Or how can I help you? So let's first delete the how are you doing? Because we're going to build like a, you know, how to build a chatbot chatbot. 
All right. Um, so let's keep these for now. And the way you can test these is, uh, you know, there is something called try it out, try it now here. So if, if I click type hello here, it's going to say reply with the default response, like greetings, how can I assess? So as you start building your chatbot, you can always go back and test things in here uh, to see how it uh, works. So I'm going to go back to intents, and it'll show you what fallback intent is. So fallback intents are created if the there, there's no training phrase for this. So it's just like if the chatbot doesn't recognize what you said, um, it's going to come up with a vague response like, sorry, can you say that again until it can uh, recognize something that can be uh, you, you know responded with the actual uh, development that's there already. So for example, when I say hello, it's going to respond with, what can I do for you? I say, I want to build a chatbot. Uh, it's going to say, give some vague response, like one more time, because it doesn't recognize it as of now. All right, so I'm going to go back to intents. Um, so the first thing I'm going to show is how to create a simple conversation. Um, so we saw that the first uh, the welcome intent has the hello and how may I assist you. Um, so if I want to like give a very simple question, like I want to build a chat bot and then the bot can respond with, I can help, you can get started with dialogue flow. Are you familiar with it? As you start building your intents, one tip I'll say is uh, don't let the user hanging. Um, always prompt in the form of a question or call of action. Um, if you're going to just end with, I can help, you can start, start with dialogue flow. Um, then you, the user may not know what exactly to say, and it may lead to some confusion in your chat building. So let us create a simple intent now. So I'm going to name it simple intent. Um, so here is where you can add your training phrase. So you, this is where you uh, think of what the user might say. So I, here I'm going to say, I want to build a chatbot. I want to know how to build chatbot. Um, so one good thing about these training phrases is the more you give, uh, the better it's going to get over time. Um, because uh, Google has their NLU uh, backend to this. So it's going to uh, take these training phrases and uh, run it on their uh, AI backend. And then it will understand any uh, rephrasing that the user might give. So uh, you don't have to like supply all kinds of combinations. Um, but the more you do, the better it gets. And then here is where you add responses. Uh, I think the response we had was, I can help. You can get started with dialogue, though, right? Are you familiar with it? Save. All right. Um, so let's test this. So I'm going to say hello. Uh, how may I help you? Now I'm going to say I'm go I want to build a chatbot. Now it responds with I can help. Uh, you can get started with dialogue flow. Are you familiar with it? There you go. So this is your first uh, conversation that you had uh, that your chatbot can do with the user. Um, so you can have so if you want to do a quick faq style chatbot uh, like sahoka mentioned there are two ways to do it one is a conversational one is an faq style um, just go ahead and build multiple intents right so it can uh, you know give answers to the these specific questions user may ask and this is a very simple way of doing a chatbot like you don't have uh, you don't need to have too many connections between them um, so it will respond to whatever the users are asking uh, there are some drawbacks uh, on that because the user may not know what exactly they're going to ask. But uh, if it's just going to be an FAQ, this works. So build multiple intents, and you're done with your first chatbot. All right. Now, you can make it richer with follow-ups. Um, so for example, uh, you have these intents. But I'm asking this question, are you familiar with it? Uh, which has an yes or no answer, and that is deliberate. Like I want an yes or no answer to it. Um, I don't want anything else. So this is how I designed. But then when the user says yes, it's a simple decision tree. I want to get back with uh, great. Ask me which aspect of dialogue play you would like to know more. And when they say no, I want to see. No worries, I can teach you. Do you have a Google account? Again, I'm asking another question. So the way to do follow-ups is if I go back to the intents page. Uh, here is a add follow-up intent. 
So here is where you will click on it. And then you can see all kinds of combinations here. Um, so yes or no is the most commonly used, but you can even have a custom uh, intent where the user space says a specific option, then you can have that kind of a response to it. Um, so if I click yes, it's going to create a uh, nested intent underneath the simple intent. Um, let's wait for a while to do that. Yeah. Oops. It created two, so I'm going to delete one. All right, if I go here, uh, you can see that it has pre-populated all the responses that is similar to what the user might say yes. So they can say, yes, I do, uh, yes, uh, of course, and other things like that. So it will capture any variation that the user might say. Um, so I think the response we had was, uh, great, ask me which aspect of dialogue flow you would like to know. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go back to the intents page. And then I'm going to add another follow-up intent for no. And here is where I was going to say, no worries. I can teach you. Do you, is that, do you have a Google account? Yeah. All right. So now we have a basic logic in your chatbot. Um, so let's try it out. So I'm going to say, I want to build a chatbot. Now it's asking, are you familiar with it? So I can respond it to say yes. And then it's going to respond with great, uh, ask me which aspect of dialogue flow you want to know. And let's try again. I want to build a chatbot. Uh, it's going to ask, are you familiar with it? I'm going to say no. And then it says, no worries, I can teach you. So this is where you can have a simple logic built into your uh, intent. So I'm going to stop here and ask if there are any questions. So Hoko, can you read out some of the questions? Maybe I'll take one or two at this point. Yeah, so we have we have a few questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was one question that said, um, what about Cisco's open source mind meld platform? Do you know how it is, if it's good and people are using it? And how um, it might Yeah, and like I mentioned, like I chose only a, a few handful of platforms uh, that's been uh, around. Uh, there's mm -hmm. there are definitely more. I, I personally do not know about Cisco's mind, uh, mind meld. I haven't worked on it, but I'm I'm assuming it's similar to these big platforms that has, uh, like mm -hmm. Google and others. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I I think the main takeaway is the logic behind the chatbots are the same. So mm -hmm. once you get familiarized with this one, you should be able to work on it. Great. Um, the other question is, is uh, what model is behind Dialogflow? The bird or another state of the art, or is it just an if-else mechanism? I don't think it's BERT at this point because that's more recent. Um, so there are uh, so Google has been working on this dialogue flow for a long time, even uh, you know predates BERT. So it has mm -hmm. this natural language understanding algorithm. Um, I'm personally not familiar with what uh, exactly they use, but it, I'm I'm ninety percent positive it's not BERT at this point. Um, they may be updating it with BERT. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so I think we're uh good right now um i'll leave the next set of questions for um when we have another stopping point okay thank you Sohoko. um okay let's go further um now if you want to customize the responses like if you want uh the chatbot to say the user's name or you know uh you know say the, how where they are from um there is a way to do that in dialogue flow uh, so there are the, uh, another a set of uh, building blocks called entities. Um, the first one is system entities, which comes with Dialogflow, um, where you know they have a set of uh, built-in entities. So I'll show you what they are. So if you go to this entities tab in here, you have a custom and a system. So I'm going to show system first. Um, it says read about system entities here. So I'm going to click on it. Um, it shows like what are system entities, and then you can see a full list of system entities in the reference. 
So if you go there, you can actually see uh, the entire list of entities that uh, Dialogflow uses uh, for its platform. Um, that could be like a color or a name uh, or a location. Um, it takes a while to do that. Um, yeah, so this one. So it has a date, uh, numbers, and all those things, right? Um, so you can choose uh, these entities. So like if you want to um, use that in your chatbot, let me show you how first. So I go to this intent, and I'm going to create an intent name entity. So this is going to ask the user's name that we had in the slide. Um, so here I'm going to add like uh, my name is, oh, sorry. I put it in the wrong field. Uh, my name is John. So once you enter John, since it's an Anglo-Saxon name, uh, it's going to recognize by itself. Uh, it's going to give the sys given name. Um, so I can give my name. Uh, it's Kalai. Uh, it doesn't recognize that because it's not a very common name. But you can assign it. You can click on Kalai, and then it shows what could be it. So it just says. Uh, you're adding new values to system entity, and I say add. And you can also give like I am Sahoko. Uh, it doesn't recognize that either, so I'm going to do that. Add, uh, and you can give anything. Um, my name is Steve. All right, uh, and then it's going to take this name and then uh, tell the user hi, and then you give a dollar sign, and then it shows given name. That's what it's been used here. And uh, nice to meet you. It may take a while to train this, so let's see if it works just in case. So I'm going to save this one. Uh, here I'm going to say my name is Smith. I'm going to give a completely different name. Oh, no, it's not just recognize that. Let's say my name is John. It says, hi, John, nice to meet you. So it's going to throw back that. Um, so it's, it, since it's a, a language model, and it, it takes a while to train the different kinds of given names. So let's try with this. I'm going to give Usha's name and then see if it recognizes. Yeah, so if I give my name is Usha, it's going to say, hi, Usha, nice to meet you. And remember that we didn't give Usha's name in the training list. So it knows that that is a given name. And uh, it, it requires that you, know, you have to do all those things, right? Um, all right, so that is where you give system entity. And this could be uh, you know, a location or an email or phone number. If you want to customize your chatbot to you know, tell you uh, what to do, uh, like how to customize uh, and you know, tell the user the kind of response that you have to give, then this is a way to do it in the system way. And there is something called user-defined entities. Um, so you can. Uh, define your own entities um, if you want to build your own. Uh, for example, if I want to give different types of chatbot aspects, um, then you can uh, give that in the user defined. So if you go to this entities, uh, you have the custom. And there are no entities here, so I'm going to create the first one. And I'm going to say chatbot aspect. And here's click. So here is the reference value. So I'm going to, so this is like, uh, a common uh, category here it could be aspect and then uh, the synonyms are the different aspects underneath it so for example uh, i'm going to give in the sense like all these tabs in here like the, if the user wants to know uh, about different uh, functions of the chatbot and you can think of something like you know if you give color uh, you can give uh, you know blue oh, sorry blue, red, green, and so on. So this is a way you can, uh, it's one way of like doing things. I mean, it's not the only way of doing things, but it is a, a, that's a fine, I have found that this is an easy way of having these groups. So it will be easier when you build your chatbot. So I'm going to save this, then go back to intents. So I'm going to create a user entity. So here I'm going to say um, I want to learn about intents. So remember, we uh, stopped at uh, 
you know, when user says, yes, I'm familiar with Dialogflow, uh, it, you know, it requires uh, the user to prompt it with, uh, uh, I want to learn about something in Dialogflow. So here it's going to say, so when I include this, it automatically recognizes that this is the chatbot aspect that we already created. And it may not happen all the time. So sometimes you have to highlight and enter it. Um, so I can say, I want to know more about fulfillment. So again, it recognizes. So you don't have to give all the uh, entities that you defined in the custom. Uh, if you just give one or two, it recognizes that you know it is calling the chatbot aspect, and it will respond with it. Now, there are two ways you can uh, design this. So here, first one, I'm going to say, uh, sure, I can teach you about this, and then dollar sign chatbot aspect. Now, what this does is, uh, uh, if you just do this, it's going to give the common name associated with this. So in this case, we gave aspect as the common name. So it's going to say, sure, I can teach you about this aspect. So I'm going to save and show what it is. So uh, I'm going to say hello, just to know, show what's going on. Um, I want to build a chatbot. Uh, it says, are you familiar with it? I'm going to say yes. Uh, ask me which aspect of uh, dialogue flow you want to know. Uh, I'm going to say I want to learn about intents. So it says, sure, I can teach you about this aspect. So we just gave this chatbot aspect. Or you can actually do this. You can aspect dot original. In this case, it's going to get the actual word that's used in here and throw back to the user. Um, so if I save here. So I'm going to start with, I want to learn about intents. So it says, sure, I can teach you about intents. I can do the same about, I want to learn about integration. And it says, sure, I can teach you about integration. So this is how you can play with, uh, you know, whether using dot original or not, depending on how you want to uh, design your chatbot. All right, so that's entities. That's one way of customizing. Um, before I move on to the context, I want to see if there are more questions because I see some more in the chat. Uh, Soko, can you read out uh, like a two or three more? Yeah, sure. So there is a question here that says, um, we asked about, uh, can we have an FAQ word file instead of creating intents? Yes, uh, I'm going to show that in a bit. Um, so that is super easy to do. Um, the intents are one way of doing it. Like if you don't have an FAQ uh, style chatbot, if you want to like make connections, um, but if you just want an FAQ chatbot, you can just do it within a minute or so, honestly. Uh, so I'm going to show how to do that after we go through context. Great. And um, another question is, is um, how can we create a custom chatbot from scratch without using Rasa? Hmm. I think there's, uh, if you want to do uh, like a completely open source, there are only a few options in my mind. Um, there's BotPress, and again, uh, that's also code heavy. Um, but you know, Dialogflow, you can make a custom bot from scratch, but uh, just keep in mind of the limitations that comes with it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when scaling up or you know while using complex logic. So you can definitely do your own chatbot from scratch here. Great. Um, another question is, is how do we handle user sessions in case client gets disconnected? And is it simple or does it need some work? Um, so there are uh, some chatbot support software that uh, you can use to make it more streamlined. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to talk about a little bit at the uh, later part of the slides. Um, so within Dialogflow, there are some options, but not many. Uh, but if you use chatbot support software like Communicate, you can assign multiple bots and even a human uh, user. So in case your bot goes crazy or it doesn't give a response, uh, the human can take over from there. So there are options to do that. Great. So um, we have a few a few more questions popping up, but um, I'll let you continue. We can okay. hold them until uh, All right. the, the next stopping point. Thank you, Sahoko. All right. So. Um, Next are context. Uh, so these make the conversations richer. 
so this is where you can connect and make a nested chatbots or make it uh, helps with modular design mainly. Um, so if we have a response that is um, common to uh, you know many you know, responses, you can actually make a context and say like if the user utters this, just you know start this conversation. So it comes in pretty handy uh, if you're making uh, a, you know, a humongous chatbot with multiple loops and such. And uh, we used uh, context a lot in Bebo because there were a lot of connectors between different kinds of benefits that we were using. And uh, each context has a lifespan. Uh, so this lifespan is uh, you know, how much the uh, bot needs to remember uh, for each turn or for each dialogue. Um, so the turn is like every dialogue. Um, so sometimes it is necessary for the bot to remember uh, whatever the user said for a long time. Say, for example, when the user said his name, um, it may need to remember for like uh, the next five or 10 dialogue turns. Um, but other times, it doesn't need to. It may just need to forget. So say, for example, the user says yes or no question. And that's appropriate only for that particular question. So we have to forget uh, the context in that, ca in that case. So um, I will show what these are. And I also mentioned that follow-up intents are given context by default. Um, so let me show you what it is first before I move on to making context. So remember, we made these follow-up intents, a simple uh, yes or no question. So when you go in here, now it has a simple intent follow-up. So I didn't give this context. So it, it the bot gave it by itself, uh, which means so this is there's an input context and there is an output context. So output context, you can think of these as connectors. So it's going to connect this to the next dialogue. So when I go back to intents, and click one of the follow-up intents, so say this one. And you can see the simple intent follow-up is there. So what it does automatically is uh, when I gave a follow-up, uh, it gave the output of that answer uh, feeds into the input of this context. So when I say yes, it's going to come here. And when I say no, it's going to go there. So it created a simple branching uh, based on uh, just by creating these follow-up intents. Now I'm going to create uh, two intents just to show how uh, contexts work. So if you remember, uh, in the no context, we asked a question, uh, do you have a Google account? Um, so I'm going to say, uh, create an output context for ask Google account. So I'm going to set the lifespan to one in this case, because I'm, I just want the user to remember for, I mean, the bot to remember for one turn and not more. So I'm going to save this one. Now here, uh, I want to show how context works. So I'm going to create two intents. One is uh, asking for Google account, and one is asking for Amazon account. So say Google account. So here, the training phrase says, a user might say, yes, uh, I have it. Uh, I have an account, right? Um, then the bot may say, uh, great. Log into Dialogflow with your Google account. And then I'm going to go back to intent one more time. And I'm going to create another for Amazon account, which is completely unrelated to this. And here I'm going to give similar answers. Yes, I have it. Uh, I have an account. Remember, these are uh, exactly the same types of answers. Uh, and then I'm going to give the response, say, if you have an Amazon account, you can get started with Lex. All right. Um, so the only difference between this one and the Google account intent is I'm going to give a context to the Google account. So I'm going to go here. And in the context, I'm going to click on it and then give uh, ask Google account context. So I'm going to take it the output context now. So this is going to get the answer from the previous intent. And the other one is not going to get the answer. So let's see what it does. So I'm here I'm going to first type, I have an account. It's going to give the uh, Amazon one because that doesn't have the context. So if you have an Amazon account, if you have Amazon account, you can get started with Lex. So that's what it's going to do. Now, when I do the dialogue uh, flow, uh, like say I want to build a chatbot, 
Uh, are you familiar with it? I'm going to say no. Uh, then it asks, do you have a Google account? And I'm going to say the same answer. I have an account. And now it's going to say, great, log into Dialogflow with your Google account. So it knows the difference between the contextual and a non-contextual uh, response. So this is how you make connections to different modules of context. Um, so And it, it is very powerful. And uh, you can have uh, multiple contexts, uh, nested contexts. I mean, you can play with it. So this is how you can make uh, your user-centric uh, chatbot much more rich by doing this. Um, so before I go on to fulfill, I see more questions. So Sahoko, can you read uh, maybe one or two? Or maybe, I, and then we can move on to other things. Yeah. So actually, one of the first questions was, how do you take care of nested entities? So I feel like you right. answered that. But do you have anything to add? Uh, no, that's it. Like you can uh, add follow-ups to follow-ups. Um, mm -hmm. So let me show here. Like we have a simple intent. So you can have like multiple answers here. So you can add a follow-up intent. And then when it comes, like you can have a custom or anything, so you can pretty much, you know, create uh, all kinds of entities here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna go back, not create, create one, but um, so in Bebo, like we specifically had um, several nested entities because the benefits agency had like a long list of questions that the user had to answer, yes or no, to uh, understand whether they're eligible for benefits. So I think at some point we had like uh, 10 or 15 questions within a simple intent uh, that went through and then did the nested entity. So you, uh, and it makes the conversation richer. Yeah. Right. And uh, there was a question earlier about, you know, what's a, what's the difference really between FAQ and the user centered. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a key thing where the, there is a little bit because it's a nested entity versus yeah. an FAQ that's just a question answer. So because it has a little bit of contextual memory, it's able to provide more personalized answer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so great. There's another question here that's um, how to create a chatbot to integrate with a mobile app. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about that. I think that is the most fun part of doing the chatbot. Uh, so I think building is one, and then uh, seeing it for yourself on a, in a web application or a mobile phone, it takes it to another level. So I'm going to talk about that in a bit. Um, okay. OK, so if there are no more uh, questions at this point, I will move on to the next things. Yeah, there's there's quite a few questions, but I think we can, uh, yeah, there's quite a few. So just a heads up, but we can do it at the next break point. OK, cool. All right. Um, so there's one more uh, building block called fulfillment. And uh, it is it definitely, like, if you have a, a website where it has a database or an external API, uh, you can do a webhook and API integration with that. Um, uh, and it can help with nonlinear or complex decisions. So I'm going to show where it is, but uh, you need a Google account to actually activate and use it. So I'm not going to do that right now, but I'm going to show this is fulfillment. Uh, you can go here, and it has two things. Like there's a webhook editor, so it can get, receive a post request in that form. Uh, and then there's an inline editor, like if you don't have any a webhook at this point, you can actually uh, do your own JavaScript code. Um, suppose if you have a nested logic, I mean, this is another way of do, you know, doing it. Instead of having uh, several follow-up intents, um, you can actually code it in JavaScript. So uh, I have I found it easier um, to do that. Uh, one late thing to keep in mind is, um, so the when you do the inline editors, um, every time uh, a fulfillment is called, uh, it's going to charge to your Google Cloud account. Um, so it's not free, uh, unlike the follow-up intents that you saw earlier. So um, feel free to use it. You can, you know, uh, code it in the JavaScript, and uh, you know, you, 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 there are some examples in here. Um, but I'm not enabling it because when you enable it, it's going to ask for a Google Cloud account. But uh, when you play with it, uh, if you create a new Google account, you will get like a $300 credit, I think. Um, so you can, you know, feel free to play around with this. Um, so this is one another way of uh, doing complex logic. So I'm going to uh, skip this detailed part for now, but I'm going to let you learn on yourself for a bit. Uh, and oh, yeah, I'm going to come to knowledge base. So this is where I said, like, you can build your FAQ style chatbot in less than five minutes. Um, so there is uh, a knowledge. It shows beta in this, uh, so because you need to enable it. So, in, so if you want to go to knowledge and use it, so you have to go to uh, agent settings, uh, and then I think it's 
uh, general. And here you have the beta features. So if you enable it, then you can use uh, the newest uh, features in the API. So it's in beta because you know it is new. And uh, that is one thing to keep in mind that um, you it cannot always um, you know, uh, it, it, cannot, it cannot always like work as you intended, uh, but most of the time it works. So let's try that. So we can go to the knowledge base. Uh, right now I don't have any, so I'm going to create my first knowledge base. Let's say my knowledge base. And I'm going to create my first document. Uh, dialog flow knowledge base so here is where you can actually give whether it's an egg faq or extractive question and answering um so from my uh experience faq works much better than extractive question and answering mainly because of the nature of task that goes into it faq is so much easier because it has a question type uh, answer type so we'll, let's choose that for now but definitely feel free to play around with this and then uh in the type you, you have the html or text or CSV. Uh, someone had asked a question whether they can do it in a Word document or text, and this is where you would actually give. So I'm going to choose HTML for now because I have a URL. Um, so here is where I'm going to copy this URL that I have. So I'm going to show what it is for now first before we copy it. So this is the uh, dialog flows documentation where they have these uh, question answer categories there. So if you have these, uh, and then if you want to build a chatbot with this, it's really simple and you will see why. So I'm going to copy this one, uh, go back to the dialog flow, and then do it in the URL. Uh, and there's an uh, option called enable automatic reload. So if you have a living uh, HTML document, um, you can uh, you know, give that URL and as, as and when you update the HTML, it, it, enable, uh, it automates your chat. I mean, it uh, updates your chatbot as well. So you don't have to manually go and do it. So it's a very powerful way of doing it. So let's create this. It's going to take a bit, so let's wait for it. All right, so now we have the knowledge base in here. And there's a, a link called View Details. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see like the dialog flow has extracted the question and answer in a very neat format. Um, so you can see all kinds of Q&A. And it's really simple in this case. Like if you have a text document with a Q&A, it's going to do it pretty much. Um, so I'm going to select some of these. Let's say, does the dialog provide audit logs? Um, can user, uh, I'm gonna just choose a few. And once I select these, you, there's something called convert to intents. So when I do that, it's asking, are you sure you would like to convert uh, these three question answer pairs to intents? So then it will move to the intents block. Uh, so let's see if it does. So successfully converted. So when I go here, so I'm gonna see the one that came from knowledge base. So now I can ask the question here, and it's going to respond. So let's see what the first question was. Uh, can security and operational administrative rights be segregated? So I'm going to just copy this. And if I ask that, uh, it's going to respond with the appropriate answer. So let's try one more thing. Does Dialogflow provide audit logs? So I'm going to do that. Yeah, so it's going to have these responses built in here. So when you have a Q&A uh, like that, you can just pretty much build your first chatbot with uh, under a minute or so. Uh, so it's very powerful. All right. Uh, so uh, I will briefly show what other features are there. And then I will move on to the integration part, because I see a lot of questions on integration. Um, so when you uh, go to the agent settings, 
uh, there is a, a tab called languages. So if you want to build a multiple uh, multilingual or bilingual chatbot, here is where there is an option called see, select additional language. So for example, say if I select Spanish, you can select as many languages as you want. You see that there's already uh, an icon with ES in here. Um, so I'm going to save this one. And then when I go to the intents, um, so this is English. And when I select Spanish, what it's going to do is it's going to retain the structure of the chatbot. Um, so, but when you click on that one, it's not going to have any training phrases. So here is where you have to give your own language, uh, you know, as a user training, uh, and then the response as well. Uh, but it has the default ones because it is a different uh, language. So when you go to the welcome default, uh, you can see that it is in Spanish, like hola, ciao, and all those things. And then it's going to respond. So we can try that for now. You can say hola, and then uh, it's going to say hola, right? Um, so I think for Indian languages, you can. I think there's Hindi. Uh, I'm pretty sure like other frameworks may have more languages, uh, but unfortunately, Dialog only has Hindi. Um, so it is super easy to make it multilingual. Um, so instead of going, you know, eat every intent and adding it, there's another simple way of doing this. Um, so you go to this import and export. Uh, you can create, uh, like, you can export it the whole intent as a zip file. So when you do that, it's going to download this. So I'm going to show what this one is. Oh, yeah. So if you unzip that. And you have all these things like entities, intents. So you can see that there's all, all these JSON files. Um, the, so intent is saved as that. Um, so if you click on one of them, um, so here you see that there is this ES and EN. So this is English, so which is where we gave our responses. And ES is where we didn't give any responses here. So you can add things in here, uh, you know, your speech or the list of responses and all those things. So if you write a code to read these JSON files and you know translate it with Google Translate or whatever, pretty much you can do it, you know, pretty easily uh, to translate on other language. So that's one way of uh, building a multilingual chatbot. Um, I'm going to show one more thing before we move on. So there are these pre-built agents. Um, so say if you want to uh, create an agent that's already there from Dialogflow, like there's some uh, dining out, like you know, if you want to have like a dinner reservation or flight reservation or food delivery, uh, this is one way of doing it easily. Just you can import it. Um, it's going to import all the intents, and then you can uh, go and customize it based on your uh, use case. So there are many uh, pre-built agents here, so feel free to look around that. And one more item I want to show is uh, when you create an agent, um, there, is, there is an option it asks for mega agent. So let me create a new agent just to show that. So it asks for like set as mega agent. So what this means is you can combine um, multiple sub agents into a single agent. So there's like a whole documentation on what mega agent is. Um, so if you have different sub modules, like if, you, if you're building a company with different uh, kinds of reservation, uh, so you can have these sub agents, like one for cars, one for flights, and you can combine all of them into one agent. So uh, this is one way of doing this. So uh, feel free to play around with this. Um, since we are running out of time, I'm going to uh, move on to integration because I think there's a lot of interest there. Um, so this is the fun part, like I mentioned before. Once you build uh, the dialog flow with intents, entities, knowledge base, or whatever, um, you have your chatbot basics ready. So it, it you, you, you have tested it. It works on Dialogflow. But you want to uh, bring it to a phone uh, or a, a web application or a phone voice application and whatnot. So I'm going to show how easy it is to do integrations. 
So when you go to the Dialogflow dashboard, you have this integration. So let's click on that. And here you go. So you have all kinds of options. So first is a Google Assistant, because that is what um, you know the Dialogflow is intended to be. So you can create your own Google Assistant. But I'm going to show the other options first. And there's a telephony uh, dialog. So you can uh, integrate your uh, chatbot into a telephone. So it's going to, uh, if, you know, you can choose your country. I think for now, uh, it's only in the United States. Um, so you can, you know, you can. It gives you a phone number where you can actually get, talk to the chatbot. And same for other things like there's like third-party systems like Avaya, Signal Wire. Um, you can create your own phone system with this. Um, same for Genesis Cloud. And then there are text-based ones. So I'm going to show uh, one thing, but you, you can see there are so many options. You can create a web demo or a messenger um, or a Facebook messenger, Slack, Twitter, you know, whatnot. Like you have all kinds of options to do this. So let's choose this one for now, uh, Dialogflow Messenger. So once you enable it, it gives you this script. Uh, so this is a script you select and um, paste it in your website. Uh, once you do that, it immediately creates uh, this chatbot in your website. So we will uh, try it now. I'm not going to paste it in a website. I'm going to show what it looks like. I'll give it a minute or two. So this one, immediately you can see this icon that popped up once I tested it out. So when I click on this, uh, it's going to create the tutorial agent. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a Spanish one on, so I'm going to go and do the English one. Sorry about that. Let's do the English one. All right. So it says, greetings. How can I assist? Uh, so I'm going to say, I want to develop a chatbot. And it says, I, I can help. Are you familiar with it? Yes. And then I would say, great. Which aspect of Dialogflow you would like to know more? I want to learn about integration. Then it says, sure, I can teach you about integration. So you saw like within half hour, we actually created a functioning chatbot. Um, so I think one question I remember was, that's Dialogflow do audits from the knowledge base audit logs or something like that. Um, so it responds as the one that created from knowledge base as well. Um, so it is super easy to create your chatbot. Uh, it requires a little bit of work to make a nice chatbot, which is what Sahoko talked about. Um, so this is a web application. Um, you can see, you know, uh, if you want to integrate it in phone, uh, definitely, you know, there, there are ways to do that. Um, I, uh, I'll show you Google Assistant really quickly, and then I'll uh, show how to do other Android or other applications. So here is where you know when you start doing Google Assistant, um, it's going to use the default welcome intent, and then you can choose which which intents you want to add. Uh, we want to add the simple intent or the knowledge base or whatever, um, right? Um, and then you can uh, test it out. I'm not going to actually go and test it out because it requires you test out on your phone or in your Google account. But uh, you can choose the options like whether you need sign-ins uh, for some users if it's like a security intended chatbot, uh, and you can you can have all kinds of applications. So if you click Manage Assistant app, it's going to show you different things. Right. So this is for a, a simple uh, web integration or a phone integration or a Google chatbot, right? Um, so before I move on to this, I want to stop and ask if there are any specific questions until this point, and then I'll move on to how to do the enhancements and other integrations. Yeah, so there's a few questions that come up. Um, there's one question, I think you already answered this. At what level can we customize dialogue flow? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, I would say there's like a whole documentation. Um, so if you go to the dialogue flow documentation, there you know I can click on it and show. Um, there's like levels of customization. So due to lack of time, I'm not showing everything, but you can pretty much go here, uh, and you know there are many ways of like customizing, like with an intents and the looks and everything. So you, you know just go through this guide. 
um, I would say like even uh, interactions with integrations and uh, how to make it look nicer and how to add your own logo. So you can do all kinds of things in Dialogflow itself. Uh, and then you can also use third party uh, uh, applications like Communicate to do that as well. So I'm going to show that in a bit. Uh, but yes, uh, the short answer is you can do a lot of things with Dialogflow. Great. Um, so another question is, is um, in an open source custom chatbot, how should we take care of scaling intents and responses? And then what's the best possible way to integrate this into a respective IT environment? Um, so if you're talking about open source like Rasa, I think uh, it is built for scaling. Uh, it depends on what other, uh, you know, website platform that you're going to uh, you know, do with. And then it has the usual scaling issues like, uh, how many users can it handle uh, and all those things. Typically, uh, the gauges, like when you use something like Dialogflow, um, the scaling is a little bit limited because uh, Google wants to use their uh, cloud accounts to scale up. But if you use open source, it's up to your website's uh, handling capacity to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are third party users where, where they have pricing schemes for different levels of scaling up. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, yeah. <laughs> That, that lends itself to a nice transition to the next question. Uh, there are some questions about cost. Mm -hmm. So if you're not using open source, do you know rough estimates on how much these other platforms cost? Um, so I can uh, say the open source is obviously free. Like you can mm -hmm. uh, do RASA as a free framework and then uh, include it. Um, Di Dialogflow, again, again, it is a Google Cloud cost. Uh, so depending on how much you want to use uh, fulfillment or scaling up, it's going to uh, charge you that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are third party software like this Communicate um, or you know any other chat fuel or whatever. Um, they have, I mean, from what I've seen, they have a nominal cost of uh, $20 per month if you want to have a moderate amount of users. Uh, but if you have an enterprise with like uh, you know a large users like ten thousand or people uh, accessing it, then you obviously have more costs depending on how much. Um, I think each software has its own uh, scaling up and cost mm -hmm. pricing. So I would say like you know, feel free to explore that and see what it suits. But in my opinion, if I have to say something, uh, I would say like learn open source because it supports the developers who are doing this, as well as it builds. Uh, you know, a great community uh, in that. So, and it is free. It just requires a little bit of coding, but uh, you will learn a lot within that. Okay, so we have a few more questions, but I'll let you um, go on to the next part. Okay. Um, so we saw up until now, uh, what can you do with the dialogue flow, but I just want to show uh, what you can do with a third party software. Um, this is again, uh, not open source, it has pricing, but it is it lets you play with it, uh, uh, you know, how on making it a little bit nicer. So I'm going to show uh, communicate and there are many like this. So this is uh, uh, this is a third-party software that takes in Dialogflow integration, uh, and then it lets you add uh, n features within it. So um, we already have a dev uh, integrated Communicate with our bot, Bebo. So if you go to Communicate dashboard, you can see this is bot integration. And here is where you can integrate your Amazon Lex or Dialogflow or any other platform bot, or you can even compose your own uh, GUI with this. Uh, again, this is not free. Uh, it has a trial period if you want to play around with it. But if you want to um, host it beyond the trial period, you have to uh, pay for it. Um, so when you click on Dialogflow, uh, it asks to select your agent from the left panel, uh, like if you in the Dialogflow system. So it asks you to save some keys and then upload it here. And then you can save and proceed. So that is, way, that is one way of uh, adding things. And then you can uh, go to the settings, and this is the fun part. Uh, you can go to chat widget and customization. So here is where you can select how it looks like. Uh, so you can, again, do this within Dialogflow itself, uh, but it's not as nice. Uh, and uh, this has a much nicer interface. So we did this for our hackathon because we had limited time. Like I mentioned, we did this within a week. So we didn't have time to develop a complete open source project. Um, so we just used this one for the hackathon. So we can add your own logo, the color, uh, you know, and what kinds of notification sounds you want when the uh, thing pops up on the website. 
uh, and what is the welcome message uh, that you want to give you know click on me um, and other like time delays and i think someone asked like a um, thread conversation on how to create uh, multiple chatbots and this is one way of doing this um so you can have uh, you know a human takeover uh, or you can have a multiple chatbot assigned to it so there are all kinds of um preferences that you can select from this area so i'm going to uh, leave it at here and i'm, I'm going to show what our website looks like because i want to show what we built um so this is the website of Bebo. Uh, so as you can see, uh, you know this is uh, yeah. You we built a chatbot uh, within a week. Um, so here is where it shows. You know, click here to talk to me, and then you can click on it. Uh, so I'm going to show, uh, for example, how can you help? So see how it actually gives with the list of things that I can click on. So this is possible with communicate. Um, so there is. So if I click on um, this unemployment insurance, it's going to say, you know, click on yes or no. So instead of letting the user type something, uh, if you have a third-party software like communicate, you can go and uh, you know include a rich user response. Um, so I'll show you quickly how to do that in Dialogflow. When you go to this intent, you pick a simple intent. So here you have a text response, and then there is a plus sign. Uh, sorry, I think add responses, and then you have a custom payload. And in the custom payload, you can actually copy paste the code that comes with communicate. And I'm again, I'm going to put all the documentation in the references, so I'm not going to go through in a lot of detail. But that is how you can actually, uh, you know, let give a name of the platform communicate and then how to have these options as rich text responses so you can click yes on it and then you can do all these things right um so this is how uh you know we built our chatbot in four days uh like i mentioned a lot of work went uh inside uh building the chatbot and the and the actual uh, building of the chatbot itself is a lot less work compared to what went inside it um so feel free to play around with this and of course um you know let us know if you have any more questions and these are some resources to learn more so i actually reference this dabble labs tutorial um it's just like an expanded version of what i mentioned uh, so far um so they have like a five part tutorial on dialogue flow and i think uh, they went in, in a lot more detail uh, on how to do that and then there's one more YouTube tutorial on communicate and dialogue flow integration. Um, you know, you can look at it and see what are the different options that you can use it in communicate, as well as the documentation to dialogue flow and communicates documents. And I gave that as a documentation URL as well. Uh, I'll pass on this slide to Usha so she can uh, forward it to all the members in W, you know, WRDS. Um, I'm going to stop here and take more questions. Great. Yeah, we have we have a few here. Um, so one, how do you incorporate dialogue flow in Android applications? Yeah. So uh, one thing I would say is like when you have a third party like this, uh, you can uh, pretty much do integration in um, web or mobile. Um, hold on. Let me see. Uh, I'm not able to bring the right one up, but there should be, uh, you know, options to do it in mobile. So it's not too hard. Um, I would say, like, if you have a Google Assistant app, uh, it's very easy to do it in an Android application. So there should be uh, ways to do that. Um, I think the biggest part is like uh, getting something working within Dialogflow. Um, mm -hmm. So there should be documentation on it. I'm sorry, I'm not able to direct to the right one now, but it, it should be in there. Okay. Yeah, because you were on communicate just now, so it's pretty easy in dialogue. Yeah, yeah. So if you go to maybe I'll go to the communicates uh, documentation and show what it looks like. So you have these Android, iOS, and all those mm -hmm. things in here. Um, so you can help yourself and you know know how to do that. Got it. Um, and then, is there a way to integrate pictures with following intent? Yes, you can. 
Um, so the thing that I showed here, uh, sorry, oh, I, I closed off my Bebo dialog. Uh, remember the rich text responses that we had at this point, um, like how can you help? Um, so instead of these uh, responses, you can even have pictures in here. Uh, you can have URLs, so you can have all kinds of things. So you, you will do the same thing. You will go to uh, this custom uh, payload and then add pictures or image URLs in here to that click on it. Uh, again, you can do this within Dialogflow itself, but I've found it's not as nice in terms of UX, um, but Communicate has a nice UX, so it, it's up to you on how you want to do it. And also I would like to point out that Communicate built their own chatbot using Rasa. So oh. yeah, so that, that they mentioned that. So I think that helps uh, to scale up and have all kinds of things. Right. Cool. Cool. Um, can we customize to receive Bengali language? Um, with Dialogflow, unfortunately, no, because uh, I see here. Let me go to the additional languages. Uh, I see only Hindi at this point. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have many Indian languages, which I would love to see more. Um, but I'm pretty sure um, other platforms have more options. I haven't uh, really checked out what Amazon offers, but I'm assuming um, they're all in competition with each other. So they should be able to offer more. Um, even if not now, it should be a matter of time. Good. I hope so. Uh, we have another question. Can we incorporate self-learning schemes throughout Dialogflow? Um, I'm not sure what that is meant. If you're talking about whether the phrases can be trained, uh, yes, you can. It, it does it automatically. Uh, it has a back-end natural language model, so it uh, trains by itself. So like I mentioned, like you don't have to give everything in the intent. So even if you give a few sentences, it learns to rephrase and paraphrase. So it does that. Got it. Um, oh, here's an interesting one. What if there's spelling errors in users' questions? Huh. Right. right, right, right. So I'll go here. Like There is this ML settings. Um, it has this automatic spell correction. Like it says, allow ML to correct spelling of query during process request. So it has all kinds of things. Um, so you can turn this on if you want to have that. Um, uh, and you know, that is possible. So definitely you can include that in your chatbot. Right. So we got some clarification on the earlier question about can we incorporate self-learning scheme through dialogue flow? Uh -huh. Um, for example, active learning or reinforcement learning. Ah, I see. Yes, definitely. Yeah, you can do that. Um, I've, I I have colleagues who did that in their chatbot flow using reinforcement learning. Uh, it is very powerful. So again, not using dialogue flow. Uh, they used open source framework because it is much more flexible if you're going to do something on your own. Um, the good and bad thing about uh, these uh, platforms from big companies is uh, it's easy to get started. Uh, difficult to customize. Um, so if your goal is to customize, uh, then I would uh, say stick to open source. Uh, if you want to like explore novel concepts in chatbots, stick to open source. Um, if your goal is to, like you know whip up a quick chatbot and you know put it on your website like we did for the hackathon, uh, then Dialogflow works very well. Got it. And that's I don't see any more questions pop up. So. I think if people do have questions, they could uh, contact you via LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, you can search for my name on Twitter. I'm the only one in the world uh, with a unique name, so <laughs> you can find me. Uh, yeah, please feel free to connect. Uh, and uh, it was great uh, going through this um, with you all. Uh, and great set of questions. Uh, it's an amazing way to start the weekend for us. Uh, so, could do you have anything to say? Um, no, Kali, that was great. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my slides and let Usha or others take over. Thank you. <laughs>